Okay, so the bell just rang, so hopefully the noise that's coming around isn't too, too loud. Uh, now we're going to move forward. I'll show you the bone tool, the fill tool, the eyedropper, and the eraser. Okay, so the bone tool is actually more than just a simple tool. It is an element for uh, making animations. Now, if I'm trying to create an animation, the bone tool will allow me to lock certain things in place and rotate them on certain axes. And what I mean by that is it acts like a bone. So if I have a, a creature or a man, B for my brush tool, and I draw a character, yay, and I use my bone tool, what will happen is I can actually link anything that's touching the sky. So, one thing you have to know as a beginner is that the bone tool will only connect to other bones if they're placed on a joint. So if I have a joint coming or a bone coming all the way down to my hips, I can no longer attach my arms. You see how my bone tool turned black instead of white? Well, that's because I can only go to a joint. See, black, white, black, white. Okay, to fix that, I'm going to delete this bone. You just click on it with your selection tool and click delete. So I'm going to go back to my bone tool and I'm going to create a bone down to where I want to connect. So say my arms. And I put a bone out to my elbow and then a bone out to my hand, a bone out to this elbow and a bone out to this hand, etc, etc. And by the time you're all done, you have basically a skeleton. Now it works a lot better if, oh great. So what just happened, and this is a common mistake for beginners, is I had something that automatically made me a new layer. So if I take my eyeball, which is down here in my timeline window, and I take off this armature, well, this leg is on a separate window or separate layer altogether. So now I'm going to have issues. What I can do is I can copy and paste it, but because this armature that I just took off, if I put it back on, it's already set. It's basically locked in place. I cannot use this armature anymore. So as soon as I try to connect it, it's doing a new bone tool on a separate armature layer. See this guy right here at the black dot? That's where my leg is. Common mistake with first, first timers. So let's move forward. If I delete this leg, I'm just dragging my layer down to the garbage. That's all I'm doing. Okay, so this is actually what my one layer looks like. But that's okay. I can show you guys from here. Now what's kind of cool about this is anything that's not attached to my bones could potentially warp depending on where my limbs move. To correct that problem, because my head will most likely warp, I will have to connect a bone in there. Notice it will only connect to my actual uh, stroke. Okay, so now that I have that in place, I can now move them. I'm on frame 1. If I move to any other frame, like say frame 5, just to give you guys an idea, and I right click, and I want to insert a pose, because it's an armature, I call these keyframes. The shortcut is F6. Okay, so here I have frame 1, frame 5, exact same exact same position. If I take my selection tool, because I'm in the armature layer, don't want to create another bone, and I move this limb out. Can you guys see how it kind of rotates only in conjunction with the joints? And if I move this bone inwards, and let's say my head outwards like so, and I take my red playhead, scrub it back, my character starts to move. This is very useful when you're doing um, static drawings, so things that stay in position and go back and forth just in place, like an animal or something walking on the spot, because it is extremely hard to move for the beginner level, and I will not be going into that in this tutorial. Okay, 
Uh, what's important to note is if I decide to make something with, uh, yeah, C won't let me use because I'm on my armature layer. Okay, so I'll use my line tool and I'll go to layer one, which now has nothing because everything was transferred into armature. I'll delete this armature because it's empty as well. Click on frame one, so now I can draw. I would like to change my stroke to say something a little larger. Eight is my favorite. Back to frame one. Delete that. Give myself a little bit of a body. There we go. And I'll press O for my oval tool. Give myself a nice head. Now this guy looks a little bit more meaty than this guy. A lot better. But if I go into my bone tool and I try to create him or tr create bones for him, I will not be able to. Because IK bone cannot be applied to stroke. Now when you have different objects, I'll select it. You see how every little stroke is considered different? It recognizes it as being objects. Despite there not being a box, it's a different entity entirely. Now one thing we can note is when I click on the head, the stroke around it is also not selected. If I decide to move my head, my inside would move my frame or my stroke would not. To correct that, you double click and then anything attached to that one stroke will go with it. I double click my body, anything that's attached to it will work. But then I have to do this as well, so I'll hold down my shift key and click. The alternative to that is simply select and everything is selected. Okay, so that is the bone tool. The next tool is the paint bucket tool. Press B to change back to my brush. Okay, so I have three different circles. If I use my fill bucket tool, the only one that will actually fill is this guy right here. If I click on these guys, they won't actually fill. Now there's a slight option if you click down here and hold it. You can select close small gaps, close medium gaps, close large gaps. Is this considered to be a large gap? No, nope, too large. Is this considered to be a large gap? Yep, it is. And you see how you have a little bit of a nick there? It connects the two shortest points, which would be the bottom of my stroke. Not that you use it too often, but in case you're in a hurry, sometimes that helps animators. Now say you take a color from the internet or a drawing from the internet, and you have a custom, uh, a custom color. Now I'm just creating a whole bunch of different colors. Now if these are from the internet and you couldn't find them again, one thing you could do is if you click the eyedropper tool and you eye dropped whatever color you're looking for, take a close look at my palette. See all of a sudden my color just jumps into my palette. I go to my dark, oh, got to click on this guy again. Jumps to a dark purple, deep purple, maroon, and one more time, yellow. So there we go. Okay, the eraser. The eraser is exactly that. It will erase stuff as long as you're on the same layer. If your layer has a lock on it, like say now it does, I can erase and nothing will happen to it. Why? Because I have my layer locked. Okay. Same thing with my armature. It has certain restrictions as well. Why? Because it's on its own layer. Now if I want to erase something that uh, is an object or is locked, I would first have to break it apart. And to do that, I'd have to make sure it's no longer an object. That will be covered in a later lesson. The hand is a scroll, so I can scroll over to my right, to my left of the stage, up and down. Kind of important if you're doing a lot of uh, zoom work. Also, I mentioned before, the zoom tool is up top. The magnifying glass will also zoom. Right now, if you look in your properties panel or beneath the tools, you'll have it on plus, you can zoom in, or minus, reduce. 
or you could just simply change it up there. Along left side to the office, please. Along left side to the office, please. Okay. Um, that seems to be about it for the basic tools. Next time, I'll discuss uh, the onion skin as well as anything else that I think would be beneficial to you guys. Hopefully you guys learned a lot, and we'll see you next time.